10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition, liftoff. Welcome to your online coffee break, where we discuss bite-sized topics that inspire, educate, and entertain. Here's your host, a software innovator, award-winning marketer, and astronomy and space buff, Chuck Fields. Hello, thanks for joining us today for your online coffee break. Well, it's been nearly eight years since NASA has launched Americans into space from U.S. soil. I was there, I took my uh, youngest son to see the Atlantis take off in July of 2011, and the mood was kind of surreal, I have to say, in Titusville. Uh, we did talk to some local um, citizens back then, and they were concerned. Concerned about their city, the economy, um, what was going to happen to NASA, and to all the visitor traffic when NASA was no longer launching Americans into space. Happy to say that uh, thanks to the commercial pr crew program, things have improved dramatically. The hope and the energy is back again. It's pretty exciting down at Kennedy Space Center and the area. And what we're going to do in this episode is I'm going to take you behind the scenes to my visit with Kennedy Space Center as a member of the press as we covered the launch of Crew Dragon Demo 1. Online Coffee Break. First, I want to congratulate SpaceX for such an exciting mission. Crew Dragon is amazing. This is the upgraded version of the Dragon capsule, obviously made for supporting human life. Now, we did have an interesting visitor this time that we'll tell you about in a little bit, but the Crew Dragon capsule is just amazing. It is beautiful on the inside. It has seats that actually shift position depending on if you're launching or if you're getting ready to splash down. It's autonomous. It uses touchscreen panels and a wonderful computer control system to dock to the International Space Station and undock automatically. It's truly amazing. This has been an exciting first step in the commercial crew program. Well, as the days were building up for the launch of the Crew Dragon mission, um, I, of course, arrived at uh, Kennedy Space Center and went to the press center, uh, which was in a beautiful location right across from the vehicle assembly building, which uh, just never gets old. Um, but one of the amazing things is we got to attend the pre-launch briefing um, press conference. And one of the questions that was on my mind was I was thinking back to Starman and Falcon Heavy and just the beautiful images that we got of Starman floating in space. And while I know this uh, the Crew Dragon was going to be inside a capsule. I thought, are we going to get any breathtaking images? Because SpaceX always does a good job of showing you the launch from every angle. They have launches near the engines, uh, launches inside the spacecraft. And I thought, well, let's ask. And so Hans was there representing SpaceX. So I asked him, what kind of video could we expect? Thank you. Uh, Chuck Fields, online coffee break. Hans, this is for you. Last year, the video of Starman just captured the hearts and imagination around the world. Are there going to be any video cameras inside Crew Dragon, possibly aimed at Ripley? And if so, are you going to live video stream any of those during any parts of the mission? Yeah, there, there will be video cameras and there will be nice views and it will give you a perspective that you would have if you were inside. So I'm, I'm pretty sure we, we, will, uh, we will create another nice video. Of course, now Crew Dragon is an amazing spacecraft, but we are going to have astronauts on it. As a matter of fact, uh, we did have a press conference where the two astronauts for the upcoming Demo-2 mission, Colonel Bob Behnken and Colonel Doug Hurley, attended. And uh, they gave some interesting perspectives on what they thought it would be like to be in the spacecraft. Uh, both of them are space shuttle veterans. Uh, so going from the space shuttle to the new commercial vehicle, we thought, what was that like? So here's Colonel Bob Behnken on his thoughts. I guess the, the way I would describe it, um, as, you, as you look at the Demo-1 vehicle and you compare that to the in-flight abort vehicle or the Demo-2 vehicle, we have to take the lessons that we can from this ship and see whether or not they apply to our mission or if the data that we can collect from this mission is important enough in other areas that maybe we would accept something that isn't quite the same way that we would do it for Demo-2. Maybe that's a long way to describe it, but what the kind of the crux of the issue is that this is a test flight 
Um, the in-flight abort vehicle will be a test flight. Our flight to the International Space Station will be a test flight in preparation for the mission that, that these two guys, along with uh, two additional, most likely international partner astronauts, will actually undertake when they go for a six-month increment. And so this is a bit of a shakeout cruise. will be the final shakeout cruise before their, their long-term mission on board the International Space Station. Now, obviously, with the space shuttle and other space vehicles up to this point, there's several buttons. If you can see inside uh, the control panel, they just had all kinds of buttons and switches they had to know about. Well, Crew Dragon is obviously a little bit simpler. There are touchscreens now, and there's only a few buttons in comparison to the previous vehicles. Uh, we asked Colonel Doug Hurley what his thoughts are on going from the switches all over the place, especially to the more clean look of Crew Dragon. Here's what he had to say. Yeah, as uh, Colonel Cabana can testify, 2,000 switches and circuit breakers inside the space shuttle. This vehicle has on the order of about 30 buttons that are hard hardware buttons and everything else is interacted with the vehicle via the touch screen. So it's, uh, it's an incredibly sleek looking vehicle from the inside uh, and it's very easy to operate from the crew interface perspective relative to what we were used to with shuttle. So much easier, a um, lot less errors that the crew can make. The shuttle was very easy. You had switches literally right next to each other and if you threw the wrong one you could make your day a lot worse rather than a lot better. And it's just so much more intuitive in this vehicle. So they did a really nice job of kind of setting it up for the crew to be successful. Now, one of the interesting spots about this launch is that it occurred at launch pad 39A. This is a very historic spot. This is where all the Apollo moon missions took off. This is where all the space shuttles took off. This is the spot for human spaceflight, and this is where Crew Dragon was taking off. So it has been upgraded since then. Uh, one of the treats that we got on this trip that just totally floored me at this point is I had the opportunity to set up a remote camera at the launch pad. Now that in itself was an amazing story, just getting the camera prepped. There's so many things you have to do on this. For one, I had to get a sound trigger. Um, this was a launch at night. I could have probably used a light trigger, but the standard mode of operation, when you have a camera uh, three or four miles away from you, where it's at the launch pad and you're three or four miles away, is that you can't be there. You can't set it on timer because there's always delayed possibilities. So I use what's called a sound trigger. You set it above a certain amount where the rumble of the engines will actually start the camera taking pictures. Now, it's just not that easy. You actually have to mount the camera to the ground. Um, I took my tripod, put it really low. I used some coat hangers to pound them into the floor to sand to make that tripod nice and sturdy. And then I had to wrap the lens with hand warmers to make sure that the dew, there's a lot of dew this time of year, uh, to make sure the dew wouldn't cover the lens and fog my shots. I also had to tape the focus in place so I wouldn't mess it up. And then I had to wrap the camera in plastic to make sure that uh, if it rained, you know how Florida rain can pop up out of nowhere, um, to make sure the camera was protected on this. So that was amazing too. But what was even more amazing, obviously, is we get to drive uh, via bus to launch pad 39A. That was amazing. But what was really cool is I happened to run into a couple of old fans. Uh, here's Tim Fernholtz. He's, uh, if you might remember, I actually interviewed him last year, last April, about his book, Rocket Billionaires. Here we are at the launch pad, and here's what Tim had to say about the upcoming launch. All right. Okay, so here we are, Tim. We've got this beautiful Falcon 9 sitting in the launch behind us. What are your thoughts right now? Uh, I mean, I'm just amazed uh, that it's here. You know, I feel like I've been waiting for this. Everybody has been waiting this for this moment for many, many years. Uh, so the fact that it's finally happening, that if it comes off, you know, we may see astronauts leave from Kennedy Space Center uh, within the year. That's huge. Uh, it's really incredible. Yeah, that would be so incredible. I remember now your book, um, My Gosh, Rocket Billionaires, just came out last year, and you're just talking about just how amazing uh, experiences we're going to have coming up, and this is one of them. So this is the first crucial step. How are the other uh, companies keeping up with SpaceX? Uh, well, in this particular race, the big rival is Boeing, who is building a, they're building their CST-100 Starliner, which is another uh, crew capsule to go to the International Space Station. They are supposed to do their uncrewed test flight in April, so next month, maybe two months from now, how it all turns out. And I believe their crewed test flight is uh, for August, no earlier than August. Now, I don't think that it, the crewed test flight is likely to happen in August, or that SpaceX, which is expected to do it in July, will do it then either. I think end of the year is a good timeline and that's what Bob Cabana the Kennedy Space Center director was telling us this morning 
Um, but that's the big one. And then, I don't know, if, can we see it from here? Uh, no, but Blue Origin has a huge factory a couple yes. miles from here. I just passed that yesterday. Amazing. It's incredible. You should get some shots of that. But uh, they're going to build the new Glenn rocket, and that's going to be Jeff Bezos' contribution to this game of going to orbit and not just to suborbital places. So it's it's coming. In the next three years, we're going to see, uh, I think there's four space capsules underway. Starliner, Dragon, Crew Dragon, Orion, uh, the new Shepard. Uh, you have Virgin Galactic, which launched people uh, last month to space for the right. first time. So it's a very exciting time. There's a lot of action going on. It really is. Now, obviously, an interesting treat to me was meeting all these wonderful people along the way. And uh, this one person I really like, if you follow him, he's called the Everyday Astronaut, Tim Dodd. I ran into him and was amazed. He was giving me pointers for uh, how to take pictures, uh, even offered to loan me any equipment if I needed anything. Fortunately, I was in good condition. But... Being at Launchpad 39A, I obviously had to ask him what he was feeling. Here's what he had to say. All right, Tim, here we are. Yeah. We've got this amazing rocket behind us. What are your thoughts right now? <laughs> I'm just overall super excited. I mean, I've been waiting a long time. You know, I came out here, the first launch I went to was in 2014, and, you know, commercial crew was right around the corner. Yeah. It was next year, next year, and finally, well... It's actually here, so I'm really, really excited to see this thing fly. It is surreal. Now, you have been inside a uh, model mock-up of the uh, Drew, um, I'm sorry, of the uh, Crew Dragon. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> it's some next-level stuff. It really, it looks to me, it's like, you can tell that Elon Musk has a hand in the design because it's so simple. It's definitely like the Tesla of the spaceships. I mean, it's just stripped down to the bare necessities. It's a stark beauty, and they pull it off really well. And actually, it makes sense, too, getting into that thing is super easy. You just go in, sit down, and you're ready to go. I mean, it looks like it's it makes sense from an astronaut stand, standpoint and an ingress and egress situation. It makes absolute sense. So I think they really pulled it off really well. Um, it definitely looks like it's a 21st century spaceship. It is going to be exciting. Thank you yeah. for your time, Tim. Yeah, Appreciate no it. problem. No problem. My pleasure. Okay, up to this point, everything was set up. I had the remote camera at the launch pad. Uh, we had the pre-news briefing. And it was just a matter of time before we had to be back at Kennedy Space Center before this wonderful 2.49 a.m. Uh, flight took off. Um, didn't get much sleep that day. I think I had about one hour of sleep and was back at Kennedy Space Center right after midnight. And um, it was a beautiful launch. Uh, you've, you've seen this. I'm showing it now on YouTube. Um, Liftoff was amazing. There was actually a, uh, a really neat <laughs> picture of lightning was going off t uh, not too far from the launch pad. Fortunately, far enough that it didn't affect the launch. But the launch itself was amazing on this. Um, what we were in for was a special treat that uh, didn't really know was going to happen. But after the launch at 4 a.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time, there was a post news conference. And those of us obviously were in the meeting. We were pretty darn tired at this point, but still kind of adrenaline flowing from the launch. But the adrenaline kicked up a notch when Elon Musk walked into the room. Now, Elon is such a visionary. And uh, I, I'm just so impressed with, as you're sitting here watching him, you can just see his, his, his mind's always going a thousand miles per hour. And, and it's been just amazing to see what, what his vision is for the future of human space exploration. And here he discusses that. Hope we go back to the moon soon. That's the goal. Yeah. Have, have, we should have a base on the moon, like a, a permanently occupied human base on the moon and send people to Mars, you know, and a city, build a city on Mars. That's what we should do. Another thing that I thought was amazing during this press conference is, of course, we have NASA Administrator Jim Brennanstein there. We we're honored to have him there. But I thought was really amazing is that NASA's budget is actually more than they were asking for this year. Um, and we have the current administration to thank for that. So it's going to be amazing what we can do with the new budget. Here's Jim Brennan talking about that. The president's first budget request increased our budget at NASA by a billion dollars, which was about a 5% increase. And then even before I got sworn in as the NASA administrator, a bipartisan Congress in both the House and the Senate plus us up by $1.7 billion. So I thought I was coming in to advocate for a bigger budget. And in fact, by the time I got there, it was actually smaller than what Congress had already given us, which is a really good problem for NASA to have. Of course, now liftoff was amazing, but that was just the first major step that SpaceX had to accomplish. The next amazing step occurred the next day when the Crew Dragon spacecraft had to autonomously 
dock to the International Space Station. What's unusual for this is usually when spacecraft are approaching the space station, they use the grappling arm to grab hold of the spacecraft and then pull it into the dock. Well, this was different this time. Crew Dragon uses computers and alignment systems to automatically fire the thrusters and slowly move in until it was docked to the space station without any grappling arm needed. That was amazing. That went off without a hitch. That was incredible. Now, we talked earlier about Ripley aboard the spacecraft and incredible views. Um, there was a surprise visitor that we had. We had a plush model of Little Earth that actually made a lot of uh, news waves. Uh, when it was uh, described as a uh, zero-G gravity indicator. Of course, once zero-G was achieved, this little plush toy started floating around inside the Crew Dragon spacecraft. Pretty amazing. This incredible mission came to a wonderful end on Friday, March 8th, when the Crew Dragon capsule splashed down the Atlantic Ocean. It was a beautiful, beautiful splashdown. As a matter of fact, it was the first time since Apollo 9, 50 years ago, dearly, that a spacecraft capable of carrying humans has splashed down in the Atlantic Ocean. Truly amazing there. So what's next? Well, SpaceX is going to be conducting another uncrewed mission, but the next mission is going to eject the spacecraft mid-flight to test the abort system. After that, it will be ready to carry humans into space, hopefully later this summer or definitely by the end of the year. Now, what else is going on in the commercial space program? Well, Boeing is set to launch their unmanned version of Starliner this coming April, if all goes well. They're going to do the same sort of things where they need to test their spacecraft to make sure it functions adequately and is safe for human flight into space. So it's going to be a very exciting time for the commercial crew program. Online Coffee Break. Well, it's been an exciting week for SpaceX and the future of the Commercial Crew Space Program. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us today for that. By the way, my photographs at the launch pad turned out wonderful. Uh, again, if you'd like to comment on today's episode, I'd love to hear your, your feedback. Just uh, go to our website, onlinecoffeebreak.com, leave a comment there, or follow us on Facebook or Instagram at Online Coffee Break. I want to thank you for taking time to join us today. Please, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to us on your favorite podcast application. And of course, if you have some friends who are space enthusiasts, we'd love it if you'd share this episode with them. Thank you so much for joining us today. See you next time. God bless.